Good morning, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Johnny Santoso Life, a show that not only spoils its loyal audiences, but showcases our brightest local talent, especially the game changers in their own field of expertise. Boy, boy, don't we have a treat for you today. Um, our guests here today have uh, contributed around $550 million to the local economy, roughly half a billion, um, and with a direct yearly revenue of around $22 million. So these guys are pioneers in turning our beloved coal, as you can see there in front of you, to carbon fibre. Again, just right in front of you there. Because, well, let's be honest, turning wine, sorry, turning water into wine, it's just last century, isn't it? So, anyway, let's find out more about this amazing journey and join me in welcoming the Carbon New Team. Here we have uh, Mark Boswell, he's our Managing Director of Carbon New. Hey, Mark. G'day. Next week, here we have Jackie Warren, the Legal and Compliance Manager. He was away, very good, lovely. We've got Adam Searle here, the Chief Operating Officer of Carbon New. Look at that, uh, that nice kind of trim here <laughs> and like manly jaw. Super so just Ross, can we get a bit of zoom in on that lovely nice manscape in there? <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Stuff there. And we have a very smiley um, Sarah Kiley, the Sales and Marketing Manager of the Good Looking Carbon New. Guys, you guys are cut out for TV, look at you, look at you, all dressed up well, a nice crisp white shirt. Beautiful guys. Alright, so welcome guys and thanks for joining us today and you for giving us a bit of an insight in Carbon New and its successes. So, let's take a look about what Carbon New is all about. The coal mining industry has been the single biggest source of economic, industrial and population growth throughout the Hunter region. We have a strong skill set in advanced manufacturing and more recently we have diversified into a successful research region led by the University of Newcastle. Today, in 2037, Carbon New has disrupted the global carbon fibre market. Our advanced carbon fibre products are derived from coal, delivering a product that is stronger, lighter and cheaper than steel. This tech metal of the future is high in demand across the globe, unlocking a broad range of previously untapped markets. Local manufacturers are working closely with researchers, government and industry to export uniquely Novocastrian products throughout Australia and around the world. Newcastle was born from coal. Carbon New will honour our region's history by ensuring the ongoing success of the Hunter's economy and its newest export, carbon fibre from coal. Yeah, well the Hunter region is synonymous with coal. We've been mining here since 1799. Uh, and growing up here as a proud Navacastrian, if uh, you, a family member wasn't part of the coal industry, you certainly knew um, someone that, that was. Um, and, and case in point here, we've got Sarah's grandfather um, on the left here, um, circa 1940s in, in the mine out at, at Curry. So there was a huge reliance for, for uh, the Hunter region on coal. Um, the, the problem in the past has been that coal's primarily been used for, for energy production. Um, so with the increase in renewables, um, there was a decrease in, in the uh, demand for coal, um, which put a lot of pressure on the coal industry, put a lot of pressure on the local businesses supporting that industry and the, the local community at large. Um, we, saw, we saw a big downturn in, in 2013, um, which uh, in the coal industry, which resulted in a lot of unemployment for the region. So there is a big dependency for our regional coal. Yeah. Okay. So where did carbon new fit into this whole thing, Mark? Yeah. So um, renewable when renewable energy started to become the preferred source of energy, um, uh, it was critical for our community to find alternative uses of coal to avoid any further economic downturns like we've seen in the past. Um, so carbon new with its um, carbon fibre product from coal was able to diversify um, the use of coal away from just energy production uh, and therefore stabilise the demand for coal and stabilise the impact on, on the local economy. Okay. So Mark, tell us more about how Carbon U came about. 
Yeah, the, the team here joined forces as part of uh, the HuntsNet Young Leaders Program in 2017. Bit of a plug there, I like it. Absolutely. Like it. Um, and, <laughs> um, and as part of that program, we had to um, uh, develop an idea that we put Newcastle on the map in terms of being a global uh, export leader by 2037. So uh, as part of that project, we came across research being conducted by the Newcastle uh, University uh, and um, into, sorry, the, the research into um, carbon fiber from coal. Now the research at that point was, was in its infancy. Um, so we uh, came up with some of the funding to get that research completed. And then shortly after, we, uh, we entered into an arrangement with the, with the university to um, uh, produce the, this unique product. Yeah, yeah. So surely in 2017, when you had that group project, surely with this amazing idea, you guys would have won that project that year? Go. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe. Well, I, I think for us, for us too, it was an extremely exciting time. Um, you know, tech, carbon fiber was, was done the tech model of the future. Um, the, Problem though was that traditional carbon fibre was was um, was too expensive and and made uh, mass consumption prohibitive. So, using our method and using a cheaper source material than coal, we were able to make carbon fibre affordable for most anyone. Fantastic. Well, mate, if I was a judge, I knew the other price straight away. Thanks, guys. <laughs> so, Jackie, the um, University of Newcastle has been ranked in the top three percent globally. They seem like an obvious partner, right? Yeah, they were an obvious partner for us, um, not only because they're Australia's leading coal research university, but also because, as Mark touched on, it was their research into the um, carbon fibre from coal that uh, they had to allow us to commercialise. Um, fortunately, part of that agreement um, was that we would keep jobs locally in Newcastle, so we would manufacture it here, but we would also commit to um, any further research and development being done by the University of Newcastle, so we make sure that we are looking after Newcastle and looking after the local economy. Okay, so Mark, other than the uh, University, what other local stakeholders are kind of helping along on this journey? Yeah, um, look, Carbon U wouldn't be what it is today without our partners. Um, Huntsnet and the Advanced uh, Manufacturing Growth Centre uh, were played a huge part in those early days in, in connecting us with, with industry partners and our customers within the advanced manufacturing uh, industry. Uh, and later on, the Hunter Development Corporation um, was instrumental in securing uh, our partnerships with various uh, government departments, um, and that helped us secure our uh, facility um, at Mayfield. Um, so, you know, these Partnerships were, were instrumental in, in carbon new success, but, but also in the success of, of this new uh, carbon industry that the Hunter has now. Fantastic. So, Jackie, why produce it in Newcastle? Sounds like it could be anywhere in the world, right? Well, that's true. There's no reason why um, there are other places in the world that couldn't produce it, but really there were five strategic reasons that made Newcastle the logical choice. Um, first and foremost, coal. Yep. We are the leading coal export port and the quality and quantity of the coal that we have here just made it a logical choice. The second is the supply, ch beg your pardon, supply chain infrastructure that, um, that supports the coal, getting it from pit to port. Um, third is our advanced manufacturing capabilities. We are very good at making things in this region. Uh, fourth, as I touched on earlier, the capabilities of the University of Newcastle, they are Australia's leading coal research university. Um, fifth is the government, really. They had a vested interest in keeping mining going in the state because of the royalties that they attract from that. And they were very generous um, reinvesting some of those funds into carbon new. Yeah. But I think really the, the best way to describe it is that Newcastle is not a Silicon Valley. We don't do digital the way the rest of the world does. We make things, we make tangible goods, and we're really good at it. And it's what we need to keep doing. Makes sense to me. So Mark, what, what about the purpose-built carbon new facility? How did it come about? Yeah, well the pressing need for us was to, to get big, bigger premises. On the back of some really strong custom demand, we, we'd outgrown our space at the university. And so to move into a purpose-built uh, research hub and production facility, that was huge for us. Yeah. Uh, it really did three things. It, it allowed us to scale up our production. 
Um, it, uh, it also reinforced our partnerships, um, uh, predominantly with, with, with government, um, where the, the facility was funded um, through different uh, various uh, government initiatives. Yep. Um, so it had the backing at that level for us and, and for um, the federal and state governments to um, see our vision was, was a huge compliment. Uh, and the third and final thing, it allowed um, researchers, scientists, engineers, inside and outside of Carbon U, all excited about um, coal and, and carbon to come together under one roof and work uh, in a collaborative fashion. Yeah, fantastic. So Sarah, why is Mayfield so significant to you guys? Can you tell us more about it? Yeah, sure, Johnny. Well, the factors influencing our decision to locate Carbon U at Mayfield were twofold. So firstly, the Intertrade site, uh, which sits on the um, former BHP site, had been rehabilitated by the New South Wales government. And that site had actually been earmarked for um, general industrial, freight, commercial uses. And so we thought that was a perfect um, location to, uh, to establish the Carbon New Hub. Now, the, the other important part about the, the location at Mayfield is that it, uh, it has a really strong link to the days of the BHP. So we feel that we're honouring the, the legacy of the, um, the BHP days and, and particularly Newcastle's legacy as a, an industrial city that's been forged by, um, by steel and, and built on steel. We're really passionate about honouring the legacy of the BHP men that worked the glass furnaces during those days. So like I said, we're really passionate about honouring their legacy. The second reason why we've uh, located the Carbon New Hub at um, Mayfield is the excellent supply, supply chain infrastructure that the Mayfield site benefits from. So we have excellent road and rail connections and we're able to containerise the Carbon New um, with the carbon fibre products, get them to the port um, and the Mayfield site is actually benefits from a very close proximity to the, um, the berth, which is deep water, yep. and is able to get the, the carbon fibre to international markets. Big ships, right. deep water berth, yeah, we're getting it out to the yeah, to the markets that need it. Makes sense. And I suppose you have know, the car family thing, uh tipping Yappies one way to build a <laughs> factory in uh Cooks Hill though. But uh so maybe it is. Yep. So touching on that BHP um no there. I believe, Jackie, you've got some sort of you know, memento from, uh, from BHP there. Yes, us all about? I do. The watch that I'm wearing today actually belonged to my great grandfather. He started working at the BHP when it opened in nineteen fifteen and he received this watch in recognition of 50 years working there and he was actually the first person at the Newcastle site to uh, rack up 50 years, so I'm very proud. Oh, fantastic. So, so like I said, we're honouring the, the legacy of those men. Makes sense, guys, absolutely makes sense. So Jackie, um, so you've got partnership with the University of Newcastle, obviously, with of, um, so various government departments and local advanced manufacturing industries. So it sounds like the old triple helix model there, so can you tell us more about it and how it works? Yeah, so Carbon New would not be what it is today without the help of all of the partners that you see on screen and many more behind the scenes. Um, what distinguishes the Carbon New Triple Helix from most models is that we've broken the mould. Um, traditionally you would have separate entities for industry, academia and government, but under the Carbon New model we've actually combined the capabilities of research and industry under one entity. Um, this really has led to better collaboration between the two arms, but it still has all the functionality as if we had a separate manufacturing plant and separate outsourced R&D. Yeah, okay. So is that what the H and the 3 means on your uh, Yes, that's oh. our triple helix. That's correct. <laughs> 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 so, Al, you've been very quiet today. Let's, uh, let's pick on you at the moment. So, <laughs> so we've talked about your carbon fiber product. How do you actually turn from coal to carbon fiber? Yeah. Uh, well, I can't talk too much about it. Patents pending. I'll get in trouble with Jackie. Oh, but <laughs> <laughs> we basically we take the coal, uh, convert it into a fluid. Uh, it's then through thermal extraction, uh, spun and baked, and then basically it comes out like a strand like that. Uh, we can then use that either weaved into sheets or sold as it is in the construction industry. Sounds very science and techy for me. Um, so, how do you deal with the mission that has come out of this, uh, this process, Adam? Yeah. Well, CO2 is a big emission from this process, uh, but using technology developed back in 2017 by the uni and uh, Orica out at Kurigan, uh, we're able to bind the captured uh, CO2 into a solid silica product, 
uh, it's then used in construction materials like um, plasterboard and, and the like. Uh, you've got to remember too, uh, the use of carbon fibre in, in cars for example, if we can reduce car weight by 30%, uh, it's equivalent to 463 megaton a year of CO2 emission savings which is roughly about 80% of Australia's total CO2 emissions. Well, that's super impressive, imagine that. Um, so, are there any byproducts that's coming out of this process over? There is some other byproducts. We've got small uh, parts of ethyl benzene and pyrene, uh, but we captured those and distilled similar to the way coppers in Newcastle do it. Okay. Uh, and they're used for varnishes and paints and, and polystyrene. Like so not only are you selling your main product carbon fiber, your white products has a market in itself as well. That's right. Very good. So, uh, so, <laughs> so what makes your, uh, your carbon fiber unique? Well, it's basically price point. Uh, it's, you know, a lot cheaper than traditional carbon fiber, but still 80% lighter and eight times stronger than steel. Yeah, that makes sense to me. So we all know that CO is your flagship account. So is automotive the key industry there, Adam? Uh, automotive is. Uh, it's not just Toyota. Um, I mean, we got that account because we could provide just-in-time delivery straight out of Newcastle's International Airport. Um, but we've also got local suppliers from Bus Tech up in Brisbane. Uh, you may have even seen some of our panels on the light rail uh, in Newcastle and on the trains there. So. Yeah, makes sense. So you got the product right there, Nathan. You want to ship it? In, um, by the port, yep. there you go. Airport, express, there you go. Makes sense to me. <laughs> so, um, are there any other industries that's benefited from your carbon fiber product? There is. Uh, we sell into four jacks um, in the shipbuilding, patrol boats out there. Uh, also into Newcastle Airport or um, fighter jets. Uh, we've got internal panels that we use up there. Uh, there's also a company out at uh, Mount Thorley. That use it in their tri lift equipment. So, who, so who's that there, um, Adam? <laughs> Headwell. Oh, Headwell. Oh, right. <laughs> so, was he a loyal and customer, was he? <laughs> <laughs> but it's also used in things like sporting goods and, and construction as well. So. Okay. So, the carbon fiber products produced at facility have been embraced by the local advanced manufacturing industry. Can you tell us more about it for us? Yeah, well, yeah, we've got quite a few customers. so we can go to site and help a customer set up uh, a facility where they can build their panels uh, there um, with our on-site team. But you know, for larger quantities, we can build in-house. So you guys send in a 3D model. Um, we've got a team that can process it all and, and have the parts going out, out the door. Okay, makes sense. So Sarah, was there like a wow breakthrough moment for you guys that thought we could jack or hit? Well, I guess, yeah, um, I mean, the price point has always been really key for us, uh, as Adam said, and I think that looking back to, wow, like way back in 2017, we were going around having some conversations with um, Australian manufacturers, and, and, and the thing that they, that they kept telling us was that tomorrow they would buy 100 tonnes of carbon fibre if, if the price was affordable. So once we got back to Newcastle and we were able to confirm the price differentiation, we really knew that... Yep, we've cracked it here, and, and I guess once we secured the Toyota contract, that's when we really started popping the champagne corks. And, um, and I guess the Toyota contract was the breakthrough moment that uh, I guess saw the flow and benefits across the region, and the economic prosperity, and the jobs growth that we've seen now for I guess 20 years. Yeah, yeah. That sounds really like a bit of a demand, and what you did was just supply it. Like, you know, yes, that's right. So, um, what, uh, what's, what's Hunter benefited? from this, uh, this you. So, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I guess not just the economic prosperity, as I just mentioned, but I guess there's been a few areas that have really benefited. Um, the, I, the, uh, Newcastle has really established itself as a research town, and, and we've been able to attract the best minds in chemical engineering to, to Newcastle, um, thanks to the Carbon New Hub. And, and in, in addition to that, we've also been able to offer paid internships at the, the Carbon New Hub, where the students have been able to take part in um, practical, um, study and, and increasing their skills, really looking more into carbon new and what, what we can um, get out of you know, coal and, and what we can achieve. I guess for the, the Novocastrians, there's been job certainty and um, I guess we've had a, a, quite a few partnerships with the Newcastle City Council 
that have really um, seen the city come to life. And, and that's what we're so passionate about at, Newca um, at Carbon U, is um, the livability of our city. Fantastic. So, Mark, what's next for Carbon U? Well, as Sarah has rightly pointed out, we've had a lot of success already, but we don't want to stop there. Um, this pursuit of ours to redefine coal is endless, and it's constantly, um, sorry, with the uh, advances uh, in, in technology and, and science and research, um, we're continually finding new ways to, uh, uh, new discoveries about, about coal. Yeah. Um, one of the things we are very excited about, um, our research is, is um, pointing towards, is, is graphene derived from coal. So um, graphene is a very thin layer of carbon, uh, one atom thick. Um, it's uh, very lightweight and flexible. It's the strongest material in the world and uh, it's more conductive than, than copper. So it's got a, a range of applications based on, on, um, on those qualities. Um, for example, um, we could use graphene in the batteries of electric vehicles to increase their range up from about three or four hundred kilometres to three thousand kilometres. And not only that, we can uh, we can use it to uh, bring the the recharge time down for those vehicles down from hours into minutes. So, um, yeah, it's, it's really exciting. Another another example, another application is. Uh, in uh, the use of, we could stitch it into clothing, so it's quite lightweight and flexible. Um, so we stitch it into clothing, it can be used for soldiers, for example, on the ground. They're currently carrying around seven kilograms of, of battery packs at the moment. We can reduce this right down to almost nothing. And, uh, and those batteries can be recharged by the sun. So uh, a very exciting time. Yeah, well. Um, you know, graphene's touted as sort of the wonder material of the future and, and Carbon U are very confident that we can easily and cheaply mass produce graphene derived from coal and we think it's going to have an even bigger impact than, uh, than our carbon fibre products, so we're very excited. Fantastic. What are you going to share at the moment, guys? I'd love to come and uh, <laughs> all in. Alright, so uh, well, there you have it folks, thank you very much to uh, Carbon U today for um, coming on board and uh, sharing us about your uh, truly inspirational stories there. So look, there's no doubt that these guys have put Newcastle and the Hunter region on the world stage with their innovative coal to carbon fibre processes. They've definitely earned their legendary status by adding a further 30,625 jobs locally and contributing to around 81,000 extra population growth in the region. So. There's no other true statement than Newcastle, once forged by fire, now shaped by fire. So thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you same time next week. Thank you.